Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Game Engines by Programming Language series. The whole idea behind this is pick a programming language and I tell you the game engine is available. Pretty straightforward, really. Uh, we've already covered C Sharp and C++ in 3D game format, as well as Lua and uh, Hacks in 2D and 3D formats. And today we're going to be covering JavaScript. Once again, 2D and 3D game frameworks and formats. Now the thing is, JavaScript just kind of says, hey, make a game engine with me so there are so freaking many of them that I kind of had to limit it down first off I kind of went with the more major projects people that you know, best support it I suppose you could say so there's a lot of hobbyist projects out there that unfortunately I just had to skip over uh, but if there is a great one I skipped please do let me know in the comments down below additionally a lot of JavaScript programs get abandoned it's just kind of a simple fact of nature there uh, so I've also only limited this to uh, frameworks or game engines that were updated on github or similarly a new product release within the last year so uh, if it hasn't been updated in a couple of years it did not make this list. All right, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the game engines available in the JavaScript language. This is game engines not necessarily written using JavaScript, but where they actually, uh, you can program your game logic using JavaScript. And as you can see, I've done a page on Game From Scratch that has all of the uh, the frameworks we're about to cover, we're going to do 2D first and then 3D. If there is a learn more link, that means that I have covered it in some form, generally a tutorial, sometimes a hands-on video. So if you want to learn more about that given engine, do click the learn more link and you are good to go. Also be aware, since you have this list, don't worry too much about the URLs. They will all be in the link down below. All right, let's jump right in. First engine is probably my favorite HTML5 game engine, which is why I put it first, and that is Phaser. Phaser is available in two versions, 2D, uh, sorry, <laughs> version 2 and version 3. 3 is the newest development branch, probably the less stable, but the newest, the shiniest, new renderer, etc., whereas 2 is quite stable. I've actually done a tutorial series for two and a getting started video for three, so no matter which one you're interested in, I got you covered. If you are looking for a 2D graphics framework for HTML and you have no idea which one to go with, go with this one because it's my favorite. All right, next up, we have CreateJS. Now, CreateJS is not technically an engine. It is a bundling of products, and they're great. Uh, there's EaselJS for drawing on canvases, TweenJS for doing tweens, which are uh, transitions, uh, SoundJS for playing sounds, and PreloadJS for loading assets, etc. So you put all those together and you basically have a game engine or a game framework. Been around forever, um, been well supported. I forget who the big company was behind it. G, uh, G Skinner started it, but then, oh, maybe Adobe got behind it. Somebody definitely with a lot of money actually was promoting this project. And I, I'm actually a fan of CreateJS as well. My uh, math tutorials was using... Uh, Create JS for the graphics, I believe. Uh, next up, we have Panda 2. Um, you can run your game directly in the editor. I don't actually know a whole lot about this. I've checked it out a couple times in the past. Uh, it's a full editing environment for creating games, so you can basically evaluate and run them on the fly, so you get your own code editor and game view in it. Uh, plus, of course, there is a full open source engine behind it. Uh, but that is kind of the extent of my knowledge. It is commercial for the full package, uh, so you do have to buy it. The price is 50 bucks a year, and when there are so many uh, free game engines in HTML space available, that makes it kind of a hard sell at times. Uh, next up, we have Coco's 2D HTML5. Now, Coco's 2D X is a huge project. Basically, it started life as Coco's 2D, which was... Huh, Python-based, and then it was ported to Objective-C, and then they made a C++ port called Cocos 2D X, and then Cocos 2D X was ported to every platform you've ever heard of at any point in time. And one of those Cocos 2D X ports was Cocos 2D X HTML5, which is a port of Cocos 2D X to JavaScript. Um, if you're interested in this package, uh, this product is definitely available and open source, um, but really only just qualifies for being actively developed. I'm not sure how much work is being done on the Cocos 2D HTML5 thing side of the equation because there is Cocos Creator. Now, Cocos Creator is also built on Cocos 2D X. It uses a light version of Cocos 2D X behind the scenes. You do develop your game using JavaScript, TypeScript, or CoffeeScript. Um, and I have done a full tutorial series linked over on Dev Game. I am a big fan of Cocos Creator because number one, it is free. Uh, number two, the underlying engine, not the editor, but the underlying engine are available for open source. And it just works well. 
Um, so if you're looking for that full editing environment for a 2D game creation, Cocos Creator is definitely one to check out. And again, I do have a freshly created like a month, month and a half ago, full tutorial series on Cocos Creator available over on Dev Game. So check, the, check that learn more link uh, out. Uh, next up, we have Construct 3. Now, this is another one that's for sale, but it distinguishes itself a bit because it's not just another HTML5 game engine. In fact, you're not really supposed to use JavaScript to develop for it. Instead, you're using their building blocks, kind of flow charty way of programming. Um, they've moved to the browser, so it's now a browser-based editing environment. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I'm going to leave my opinion out of it, but I do have a look at the beta version of Construct 3. Construct 3 has been out for over a year now, so I probably should update that. Uh, but if you do want an idea of how Construct 3 is all about, click that Learn More link. Uh, as I mentioned, it is commercial, uh, and it is $135 Canadian, so I'm guessing that's $99 US. God, the Canadian dollar. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so very Various different pricings available. Is it worth it? Is it not? That's kind of down to you to decide, but it's along the same lines as Stencil, GDevelop, those kind of products. Oh, speaking of which, GDevelop. Uh, GDevelop is a lot like Construct, but it's open source free and also supports JavaScript. So if you're interested in checking it out, I do have a hands-on video of the earlier version of GDevelop, and I do intend to cover GDevelop going forward. Now, the whole idea behind GDevelop, again, is that you're supposed to be using a visual flowchart kind of setup. Uh, so you don't need to know programming, but you obviously can use JavaScript with GDevelop. I also believe you can use C++. So if you want to extend it, uh, definitely one of those platforms to check out. And again, it is open source up on GitHub. Next up, we have Melon.js. It's an open source HTML5 game engine that empowers developers and designers to focus on content. I literally just read that on screen because I don't actually know much about Melon.js. Been around for a long time. It is fairly popular. It integrates with Tile but does not have its own map editor built in. It's kind of a lightweight framework along the lines of um, Phaser but probably a little bit smaller in scope. CraftyJS, this is a whole lot like Melon.js. I actually don't have a whole lot of experience with it. It is a flexible framework for creating JavaScript games. As you can see, Canvas and DOM, uh, open source, small component system, collision detection, events, you name it, it's there. Um, bunch of demos you can check out. So if you're looking for another one of those lightweight kind of portable uh, JavaScript-based frameworks, CraftyJS is another one to check out. Next up, we have Pixie.js. This one should not be on the list. It's not It's not a game engine. It's, it's a renderer. And it is underlying renderer used for um, a lot of game engines, actually. Behind the scenes, Phaser has a Pixie.js renderer. At least uh, Phaser 2 does. And a lot of the other ones do as well. It's basically an optimized, fast, flexible, and free... Okay, I'm just reading off screen. Uh, but it is. It's a very fast canvas 2D renderer for JavaScript, but not technically a game engine or even a framework. So I probably shouldn't be on the list, but hey, it is. Uh, next up, we have vPlay. vPlay, actually, the primary programming environment is Qt's uh, uh, QML programming language. But you can load a uh, program in JavaScript. I actually don't really know a whole lot about vPlay, but I have a lot of people actually request it. And here you can see the native look and feel, auto-updating UI, powerful, flexible animations, native device features, sensors, locations, networking, analytics, you name it. It's commercial software again, so we're looking at free for personal, uh, $49 for indie, and $239 per developer per month for enterprise. Uh, so it's not it's not cheap. This, this is uh, indie version is 50 bucks a month, which is actually quite high by game engine standards. Uh, what is the main difference? Eh, actually it looks like the personal version will get you going. Only thing is the splash screen. And that's normally the deal breaker for most people. And you have salary limitations. So if you make less than 50K a year, if you make less than 100K a year, you've got to go to the indie version and then unlimited income gets you up to that enterprise edition. Again, not a lot of experience with vPlay, but it is something that I probably should check out one of these days. I've actually have a fair number of requests. Let me know if you're interested in vPlay down below, or does that price tag you know, scare you off? All right, next up, we have RPG Maker MV. Now this one, you've heard of RPG Maker. Everyone's heard of RPG Maker. It's been around for, I don't know, 70 or 80 years now, I think. Uh, every once in a while, they change the programming language you use to create your game. Sometimes it's Ruby. Now it's JavaScript. So if you want to develop a JRPG-style role-playing game, uh, RPG Maker uses JavaScript on the back end. Uh, it's also on sale all the time on uh, Steam, so you're a sucker if you pay full price. Do not pay full price for uh, RPG Maker products. 
ever. If you pay anything more than 50%, you're getting ripped off. And if it's more than a version or two old, they're on sale for like 80% off routinely. So I wait for the next Steam sale if you're interested in picking it up. And then we're moving into 3D land. Uh, it's actually kind of shocking how many 3D game engines there are for JavaScript. And in some ways, it's shocking it took so long to get this many. For a number of years, there was nothing. Uh, but now there are two real big open source winners. There's Babylon JS. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this guy. There's no editor, though, but there is uh, Unity editor integration options where you can export your scene from Unity and use it in Babylon JS. Uh, I think Microsoft is also a supporter of this project for a long time. So it was definitely been well funded and well supported. It is updated all the time. And the cool thing is I have a tutorial series to get you going. So click that learn more link if you're interested in learning more about Babylon JS. But it's it's basically a 3D game engine for um web and it, it does what it says it does it does really good graphic quality and next up we have play canvas play canvas is a lot like uh babylon js the underlying game engine is open source the web-based editor you can wield your worlds in is not there are also it's it's like 3d game engine for the web uh it's also this one though has its own editor so you can create your world create 3d scenes and all that kind of stuff using play canvas online you can get a free account that limits you in the amount of drive space available to you and again the actual game engine part itself is open source and available whereas the online version has a commercial price tag you can see it goes from zero to fifteen dollars a month to fifty dollars a month uh, and you're looking at fifty dollars a month to remove the play canvas loading screen which i know is a stickler for a lot of people and most cases you're free is limited to 200 megabytes, but it does give you a chance to really check the engine out. I have done a couple tutorial series on Play Canvas. I am a fan. It's really easy to work with. Uh, check out the little more link. You can see just how easy it is to actually create a 3D game using Play Canvas. Next up, we have Copper Cube. And hey, I've done a tutorial series on this one as well. In fact, I just did it like, I don't know, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks ago, um, over on DevGain, click the learn more link to learn more about CopperCube development. Now, CopperCube is wholly about no programming required. And it's probably, in terms of 3D game engines, the most successful at that claim. So you can do a lot in CopperCube without ever having to get into code. But when you do want to get into code, it's there, and it's JavaScript. And it is, in fact, based on <coughs> Copperlict. Now, Copperlict is a... Um, game engine without an editor, uh, completely open source, HTML5 based game engine. This is what um, powers CopperCube. So if you want to just create a game, you don't need to use CopperCube. The actual engine itself is Copperlict under the scene. Now Copperlict is uh, in, I don't actually know the direct relationship other than maybe just the same developer, uh, but the same family as IRRlict. And I believe Licht is light in German, if you're wondering. Uh, next up, we have A-Frame. Now, A-Frame technically isn't a game engine. It's uh, oh, actually it's hard to explain exactly what A-Frame is. But the good thing is, I've done a video. So click Learn More, you want to learn more. But the entire idea behind A-Frame is it is all about creating VR scenes. And you can basically use uh, this markup style language to create VR scenes and then run them in the web in VR. Uh, so if you ever wanted to create, you know, cyberspace light, uh, A-Frame is a framework that allows you to create VR scenes using HTML5 and just straight HTML. Uh, next up, we have 3JS. 3JS technically isn't a game engine. It's a lot like Pixie.js from the 2D side of things. 3JS is that on the 3D side of things. And 3JS is the technology, the rendering technology that powers a whole lot of frameworks and games and solutions and such. So if you want to create your own uh, 3D game engine and you don't want to go about creating your own renderer or object loaders or scene graph, 3JS is there for you. Probably the closest thing I think to 3JS in scope is Ogre. So it's a renderer scene graph slash asset pipeline um and it's it's awesome so if you're looking at doing 3d in the web 3js is your guy and next up we have whitestorm js or ws.js uh whitestorm is a 3d game engine i actually have almost zero experience with it and so we'll go through the features list uh simple and usage speeds up 3d prototyping component based simple integration of high performance physics uh automation or, or yeah, automation of rendering, ES 2015 plus rebased, extension system, modules, webpack friendly, integrated 3JS. See, everything uses 3JS. Um, 
And you can also drop from the White Storm down to 3JS. So if you want to kind of mix and match. So if you already want someone else's work where they built a game engine on top of 3JS for you, is an option for you. Uh, it is obviously open source. You can see here, hosted up on GitHub. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of information on this one. It's one of those ones I'm going to probably check out, but as you can see, it is still being developed. Uh, as of three months ago, anyways. And Blend for Web. The Blend for Web is a commercial project. It's very weird. I've never actually jumped into this one, and I, I should. Kind of, this is sort of like um, Armory 3D before Armory 3D existed. It, it kind of turns your ability to develop HTML5 3D web applications inside of Blender. Um, and it's a commercial product though. Uh, where's the pricing? Blend for Web Pro. Uh, you can try it, check it out with the free version. Eventually you need to upgrade to the Pro. And I think one of the big problems is it's quite pricey. Uh, so here you can see, yeah, there's definitely one of the problems. So, so the, uh, the free version is GPL v3, which has a fair bit of limitations, uh, but completely free. Now the pro version is a thousand bucks. So I think that's why I haven't used it a whole lot. There are some limitations on what you can do. You can see uh, GPL obliges you to share the source file of your products, including programming code, blend files, and other resources. So that's obviously gonna be a deal breaker for a whole lot of people. And if that's the issue, you're looking at a thousand bucks. But if you are a Blender developer, and for some reason Armory doesn't do it for you, or the lack of maturity in Armory, because Blend for Web has been a number of years in development where Armory is, you know, nascent at best, um, this may be the option for you, but do be aware there is that price tag there. And if you're interested in learning more about Blood for Web, let me know. I may do some coverage on it. It's a product I've always intended to look into more. I just haven't done it. And Verse 3D. Now, Verse 3D is another one I am relatively unaware of. I think it is a whole lot like Blend for Web, to be honest. As I saw, one of the things they advertise is they basically uh, just stole NASA as a customer from Blend for Web. But you can see here they use a visual style programming, a lot like Construct. Uh, it's 3D based. Um, yeah, again, this is one of those ones I have to check into in more detail. It is also commercial software. Uh, you can get a free version, but you buy it based off of your, so if you're looking, if you're working with Blender, uh, you can get a personal license for 290 bucks up to an enterprise license for three grand. If you're a Max developer, same deal. Uh, but I think it's the same basic idea. You can author games and software directly inside of your DCC tool, be it 3D Studios Max or uh, Blender. So uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it. It does seem there is a free version available. Let's hope it's just not time limited. There we go. Yeah, so there is an option. It's free for evaluation purposes. So if you do want to check it out, um, there is a free download available. And that is my list. Uh, let me know, did I miss anything glaring? Is this uh, a pretty comprehensive list? I, I, I know there are a lot of engines out there and you got to draw the line somewhere. But if there's any glaringly obvious or ones that you absolutely love, do let me know and I will add them to the list. Uh, but, you know, we're coming up on the 20 minute mark as it is. That's probably about where I want to finish things off. So hopefully you saw an engine on here that looks interesting to you. If I missed one of your favorites, do let me know. Check something out. Got any questions? Also let me know. And um, yeah, that's about it. So that is JavaScript based game engines. Hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.